With me today from Roskill, I'm joined by David Merriman. David, nice to see you. Good afternoon. Hi, uh, Andrew. You've had your uh, your market outlook report out fairly recently, looking ahead for the next ten years. Yeah. Tell me a bit more about the supply side of the the industry for rare earths over the last twelve months. How's that looked? It's it's been quite a turbulent year actually in terms of supply and really focusing on China as the main market where. Mm. China is, is the largest producer of, uh, or producing country of, of, of rare earths in the world. Um, also accounts for around 70% of demand as well in 2019. So really uh, a very China-centric market. But it's the changes that we've seen over the past 12 months really to do with these sources of raw materials that are going into the Chinese market. So we've seen three major changes really. The first has been a uh, the closure of the border with Myanmar. Now, China was taking a lot of raw material from Myanmar to feed some of those rarest processing plants in the south of the country. Now that supply sh uh, stream has been cut off. It's mm. actually been cut off twice within 2019 as they opened the border very temporarily to move some more material across. But that closure has starved a lot of the uh, processing facilities in the south of China of a lot of feedstock material. Now, Chinese uh, domestic supply has also been disrupted with a lot of mines in the south of the country again being dis uh, disrupted or suspended uh, by environmental regulations that are being brought in. So it's really uh, cut back on the uh, raw material uh, supply in the, in the south of China which um, is responsible for the vast majority of heavy rare earth production. Mm. So that's been one major change and we've seen a bit of a reaction in the prices for particularly terbium and dysprosium over the past uh, 12 months because of that. Um, another factor that we've seen is an increasing imports into the Chinese market of raw materials. Now, particularly for the light rare earths, which is the other half to the, to the heavies, um, and that's mainly come from uh, the Mountain Pass operation in uh, the USA, uh, but also some other smaller operations feeding light rare earth production um, in northern China. Mm. Really. Uh, and finally, uh, the third change that we've seen really is an increase in imports of monazite material, and that's as a usually from a byproduct of heavy mineral sand operations, so titanium mineral sand operations, usually in places like Madagascar, Indonesia, the Philippines. And we've seen more of that material being imported into the Chinese market as another feedstock source for the rare earth industry. So all of those changes together have, have created a bit, of, uh, a, bit, you know, a bit of movement in the prices and, and really a shift in the supply chain. What about the US-China trade war? last year. What impact did that have? Well, yeah, it, that's had a number of impacts as well. Uh, at the end of last year, we saw the USA looking at, at how it can secure other sources of, of rare earths, uh, and particularly forming an association with uh, Australia, uh, with a number of projects under development or in operation in Australia. And we saw the USGS and the Australian or Geoscience Australia um, forming an agreement to, to really look at the supply of, or the deposits of critical raw materials and rare earths being one of them. More recently, we've seen the US really, uh, or the Department of Defense in the US, become much more involved in trying to um, form a, a China independent supply chain for uh, particularly the heavy rare earths. And they've asked for a number of tenders for setting up of a, a heavy rare earths um, separation facility or pilot scale um, facility for separation mm. of rare earths within the US. And we've seen a number of companies um, tendering for that, probably most notable, uh, Linus Corporation with Blue Line um, in, uh, in Texas. We've seen uh, uh, Texas Mineral Resources uh, with um, USA Rare Earths uh, in Colorado setting up a, a pilot plant. Uh, and also uh, UCOR in Alaska um, partnering with a couple of other companies uh, looking at, at, at getting that uh, going as well. And it's quite important actually to note that the US Army is actually looking at directly and financially investing in, in setting that facility up. So that's quite, quite a strong move from the US. What about where the, the demand side of things is concerned? Where, where's that growth coming from? Um, within Rare Earths, I mean, Rare Earths are using a whole plethora of, um, of applications uh, from catalysts, polishing powders, all this, but it's really permanent magnets or rare earth permanent magnets where we're seeing a lot of the strong growth in the industry. Mm. And that's really targeting four main elements. That's for uh, prosodium, 
um, neodymium, uh, terbium and dysprosium as well. So we're expecting to see the market really focusing on the on demand for, for those four elements. And we're, the demand that we're actually seeing, or the demand growth over the next 10 years, well, at least into the years to 2026, we're seeing around 6% per year um, compound annual aggregate growth um, over those years uh, to 2026, slowing a bit towards the end of the forecast period, so into the late 2020s. Uh, but that's quite solid demand for over a, a long period there that we're seeing for, for those, those elements at least. And is there enough supply to meet that demand? Well, that's the important question. And for the majority of rare earths, we do see that there is sufficient demand to meet, uh, or sufficient supply, sorry, to meet that demand. But for those magnet materials, so those ones that I mentioned before, particularly pre, um, neodymium and for dysprosium, we are expecting to see the market become quite tight during periods over the next 10 years. Now, that is really going to have an impact on prices, and we really see those two elements starting to uh, dictate a lot of the price movements, not only for themselves, but also for the whole suite of rare earths as companies target maximizing the production of those two elements, or at least the magnet suite of elements moving forward. Very interesting. David, yeah. good to get your insight. Thank you. Thank you very much.